All right, class is back in session. What is going on, guys? Here at you with a tutorial on how to beat Quartzmon, uh, as well as the Hunter's uh, deck from BT12. Uh, this is a really strong deck. I'm not going to lie. A lot of people I've seen have been playing this, did really well in Japan, and I think it's pretty much full power uh, over here. Quartzmon is a hell of a card, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about how exactly you are supposed to do uh, deal with these cards, and uh, depending on what deck you are playing, what can you do against the meta. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, first of all, I want to mention uh, similar to Crossheart, this deck relies on its rookies as well as its tamers. So if you can kind of hinder one or two of those things, uh, you can do pretty well into this matchup. So preventing early aggro, a lot of times what they are doing pretty early on turns one and two is digivolving their guy in the back, playing a tamer, playing another rookie, and then swinging a couple times with their low level Digimon. So they have their cards like Gumdramon, Psychmon, and then of course you've got our Stardramon who does allow you to uh, Digivolve basically for a one cost. Um, a lot of the times, if you do have your uh, tamers in play, so they can do something like uh, promote their rookie, swing security, digi cross the guy, digivolve our Stargemon, and then swing again. Uh, keep in mind that the only Digimon that has rush or effectively has rush uh, in this deck is going to be the Aris Stargemon. So it's not like Crossheart where you basically have to worry about every like Shoutmon card having rush because of the Shoutmon inherited. Uh, it's basically only this card, although it is still a really strong card because then you've got to watch out for superior mode. So um, I do want to say that blockers can prevent early damage damage to save you in the long game, uh, as well as preventing a superior mode, big blockers such as Magnamon X, uh, War Greymon, etc. Anything bigger than real t really 10k uh, is where superior mode is sitting at. He doesn't have any sort of battle protection. I don't even actually think that card has saves, so they are wasting a lot of resources if you are able to block uh, that card and delete it. Uh, so I do want to say if you are playing a deck like Armor Rush, Machine Dramon, Examon, those sorts of decks that can put up pseudo blockers or just big blockers in general, you can do pretty well into this matchup, especially because uh, their deck doesn't really play a whole lot of removal cards, if any at all. Uh, so early aggro, preventing that is really, really strong. Uh, the next point I want to make is going to be Tamer Control. This one seems obvious, right? Again, similar to Cross or other Digicross decks, Hunters is really reliant on their Tamers uh, not only to give them various bonus effects at the start of the turn, you know, Tagiru is a memory tamer, Taiki lets you get a draw, I think, and then Yu lets you gain the memory, uh, stuff like that. Uh, not only do they have those bonus effects, but the Hunters is also really reliant to uh, on their tamers to reduce the evo cost of their Digimon. All of their tamers basically say when you would Digivolve into a Digimon with save, you can suspend that tamer to stick an inherited underneath it, reduce the cost by one. Of course, you can, if you've got multiple tamers out, you can do that multiple times. So being able to digivolve into their, uh, do their RS Sargemon play for like two or three memory uh, is really, really scary. So you want to prevent that as much as possible. So obviously if you're playing a deck like Black War Greymon, you're pretty strong into that matchup, I think. You've got cards like BT8 Black War Greymon, you got Hades Force, which is just an absolute blowout. But even if you are playing a green deck, something like Bloom Lord or heck, even if you're playing the uh, Hunter Mirror match, you can play cards like Quartzmon to be able to just floodgate your opponent out of using their tamers whatsoever. A card like Argomon level 6 from BT5 is also able to uh, just be able to suspend all your opponent's tamers. Uh, and preventing them from unsuspending is pretty strong because they don't really get to use their effects. Old Clock Shot Man is another one where you've got to suspend it to use its effects. So you're not really worried about superior mode in that case because it's really just doing like 2 damage as opposed to 4. So tamer control I think is really important if you do have access to it in any, like I say, any red or black Greymon deck or any green sort of deck. Um, there are other blue cards that kind of deal with tamers like um, the Jellymon cards I think like let you bounce tamers those are a little bit more obscure not really sure if that works uh, a card like Darkness Bogramon is another option uh, that you can definitely use it's I mean it was made specifically to counter uh, the hunter's deck just being able to bounce all tamers uh, back to hand is really really crazy so that's another one uh, worth mentioning uh, the next uh, kind of topic I want to talk about is everyone's favorites uh, floodgates just cards that don't let you or your opponent to play the game uh, so there's two main ones I think that are really good uh, into this matchup. 
Um, number one is going to be the Solarmon type floodgates. Uh, Solarmon, Psychmon, uh, I think the Black Kokumon is also like this. Uh, the one that says all turns player can't reduce play cost. Now, this is really good. We've seen this in the past against Crossheart. It basically prevents the entire uh, Digicross mechanic uh, in the sense that, like, yeah, they can still stick their materials underneath their Digimon, uh, but they can't really utilize it to reduce the cost. So if you're playing against Blue Flare, they're playing their Metal Greymon for seven, all the Shaman cards, they're playing it for like eight or nine. So really, really strong against those cards. And similarly into Hunters, it prevents a lot of their early game plays because they're really digicrossing the rookie. So instead of playing a Gumdramon for two, they're playing paying, uh, paying four cost uh, for that Gumdramon or their Psychmon or anything like that. So usually they won't be able to do that uh, combo where they go Gumdramon for two, uh, R Star Dramon for one, swing, and then you know go into like a superior mode. Uh, end of attack swing so usually they won't be able to do that if you're able to choke them out of the memory and then the other one I want to mention is the Siakomon type floodgates the ones that prevent uh, opponents from reducing digivolution costs this is really good into their tamer effects because like I said their tamers like Taiki and Yu and Tagiru do utilize um, like you basically stick a material underneath the Digimon to reduce that cost by one so again you're really playing the memory game here you're not letting your opponent get as much value as possible and you're limiting their actions by making everything more expensive for them it's making it more expensive for them to play and usually that deck at least the standard versions don't really play any ways to gain extra memory like any blinding rays or memory boosts or stuff like that um, it will that happen in the future who knows uh, but even then you can just play the gazimon floodgates uh, to counter that kind of combo as well uh, so floodgates still really strong albeit really annoying um the next uh, kind of topic I want to talk about is going to be uh, dealing with their boss monsters. So number one, dealing with our Sargemon superior mode is going to be really, really important. So this card does two things. Uh, number one, it has a really strong removal effect. Uh, I believe it says um, when you digivolve that Digimon, you can put a level three Digimon your opponent controls underneath one of their other Digimon as a material. But then for each tamer you have with a different color, you increase that level cap by one. So if they've got like three different color tamers, they can stick one of your megas underneath another digimon and just basically getting rid of it now this sort of removal effect is really really strong we saw in the past with bogramon in theory that card was really powerful but it was just too expensive to make the effect really viable um, but this effect plays around every protection effect in the game but it plays around any sort of deletion or bounce protection or dp reduction protection there's no protection in the game that prevents it from being put underneath a digimon as a material so number Number one you need to do um, is play around that removal effect. So whether this means removing their tamers of different colors to where they can't really touch your Digimon, like let's say if you've got like a black or you're playing black or Greymon, so you've got two things on field, you can evolve a BTA black or Greymon, pop two of their tamers, so now they only have one tamer on field, so if they do go into superior mode, they'll only be able to deal with a level four instead of one of your level sixes, which is what you care about. Um, another way to kind of play around this is by only keeping one Digimon out in play. So one stack decks that I've kind of shown on the left here, Gallantmon, Wargreymon X, Chaosmon, most of these time, most of the times, these decks really only keep one thing on field. And so while you don't have protection against them necessarily, you can kind of play around this effect because if you only have one Digimon in play, your opponent cannot use superior mode to stick your Digimon underneath something else because you don't have another Digimon in play. Uh, so decks like Wargreymon, Chaosmon uh, are inherently strong into that because you don't really care about just having uh, anything else except for your one giant stack that can either do multiple security or has a bunch of different uh, bonus effects, protection effects, whatever, board clearing ability. Um, so those sorts of decks are still really strong. And of course, an another reason I've put Chaos Dramon on here is because it's another deck that can play a blocker over 10k to stop uh, the superior mode from coming down uh, for two checks uh, multiple times with that end of attack effect, which is really, really annoying uh, to deal with. So and those sorts of things uh, I think are really good in dealing with superior mode. Also, this superior mode usually has no like battle protection. I don't think there's anything inherited uh, to inherent to that deck that gives it battle protection. Um, so being able to block it, uh, being able to have maybe if you're playing like a yellow hybrid or security control deck, strong security effects, um, stuff like Lonky or a Chaos deck, being able to get rid of that Digimon just on like the first or second check as opposed to like the fourth is really good as well. Uh, so definitely worth mentioning there. Um, last point I want to make is going to be out to a Quartzmon. Uh, so Quartzmon, level 7 Digimon, 15,000 DP, really, really powerful. However, it is not without its faults. 
again, similar to Superior Mode, this deck doesn't really have any sort of protection effects. It's usually just, um, you know, once they slap the Digimon on the field, if you're able to out it, um, you're usually in a pretty good position. So, uh, hard removal options are strong into dealing with Quartzmon stuff like Chaos Egg, uh, Wyvern's Breath, um, Gaia Force, all these really powerful removal cards that I think have kind of been phased out of the meta to some extent. Obviously not Chaos Egg, that card's always just been really broken. Um, but even just general cards like Gaia Force, Wyvern's Breath, um, these will be really good in the Quartz Mon. Being able to just out their uh, Quartz is their win condition. A lot of times they put a lot of resources into it. So if you're able to get rid of it, um, again, it doesn't have like material save or anything. So they're just going to lose all of their uh, like 9 or 10 or however many materials they have underneath their Quartz Mon. And they're going have to build up again and usually this, these decks only play two to three cop three is like max i've seen usually only two copies of quartz Mont to begin with so pretty much if you out one you're in a pretty good position um, the other thing i do want to mention is dna digivolution being able to DNA Digivolve if you're playing a deck like Imperial Dramon or Examon or Mastamon uh, is really good against Quartzmon because it allows you to quote unquote unsuspend underneath the Quartzmon because of the fact that when you DNA Digivolve, the Digimon just comes in unsuspended. It's not considered unsuspending, so it, it, it kind of gets around Quartzmon just due to the fact that, that it's like a considered a new Digimon that just comes into play unsuspended. So with that, sort of uh, scenario you can uh, maybe if they've got a suspended quartzmon you can dna into like an examon and just attack into the quartzmon or you can dna into like a mastamon and then you've got a you know big board on field maybe you've got your retal blockers with like your angelmon and um you know lady devimon you could play the magnet angelmon recover a card maybe delete one of their digimon and then a chaos deck their quartzmon stuff like that is really really strong uh, into the deck um another thing i do want to mention is that again in the mirror uh, uh, our Stargemon Superior Mode was basically designed to be able to function under Quartzmon. So this is a card, basically the only card in the game currently that can attack without suspending. So even if your our Stargemon got suspended by the, the Quartzmon, it can still end of attack uh, check into your opponent's security or potentially go for a game. So really, really good um, against the Quartzmon or just the Hunter's deck in general. Uh, and then honorable mentions I do want to talk about is Death Xmon. While not necessarily specific to Quartzmon, this card is just generally good against uh, decks like Hunters that like to spam Tamers, like to go really wide, and being able to just de-digivolve the Quartzmon right there uh, is really strong because maybe if you're playing a deck um, that can unsuspend your own Digimon via effects, um, you can, you know, utilize this Death Xmon, delete their... Um, or D Digivolve their Quartzmon, maybe to delete some other Digimon, and then go about your plays. You're free to unsuspend, you're free to declare attacks and stuff like that. So, uh, like I said, as far as general decks go, if you're not playing a deck that can uh, play into D DNA Digivolution, if you're not playing Hunters for our Stargemon Superior Mode, you can kind of just tech in some stronger removal cards. And if you're playing any blue-green deck, Megadeth is a really, really strong card because it is so efficient. While your opponent does get back that Quartzmon, a lot of the times they're putting you to like four or five memory when they evolve the Quartzmon anyways because it does cost 9 to Digivolve over something with save. Uh, so being able to efficiently get rid of it is also really important. Uh, but anyways guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, kind of discussion on how to deal with Quartzmon, how to deal with our Stargemon Superior Mode, how to kind of deal with the Hunter's Deck. And if you like this series, uh, let me know down in the comment section below what you want me to analyze next, what kind of uh, deck is annoying you so much that you want to see how to beat it. But anyways guys, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll We'll see you next time.